I swear, this is the second time I'm recording this video. What's up? No, I'm not that guy. How's it going, guys? Hope you're having a great day. Today, I thought I'd take a moment to talk about something that confused me a lot when I first came across it, but I'll try to make things as simple as possible for you guys. Now, before I get into the main topic, let me start by first explaining a couple things that are gonna help us understand the concept of closures. Just so that we're all on the same page. I'm sure at this point, all of you have came across the word scopes. No, no, not those kind of scopes. In JavaScript, scope refers to the current context of your code. There you go. But wait, I thought this was going to be simple, Matthew. Yeah, you're right. So here goes. In JavaScript, there are two kinds of scopes, the global scope and the function scope. Wait, 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 wait. Now here I meant to say local scope. JavaScript has two kinds of scopes, the global scope and the local scope. It's just that by its nature, JavaScript only creates a new scope when a function is called. That's why sometimes you will actually hear people referring to it as function scope, but technically the correct term is local scope. Now, ES6 introduced block scope variables, but that's another topic for another video. And yes, I know that for the rest of this video, I've been calling it function scope. Bad Matthew, should have known better. Let's get back to it. When you declare uh, create a variable while not being inside a function, then those variables are created within the global scope. Meaning that no matter where in our code we try to use them or access them, those variables will always be accessible to us. We will always be able to use them and call them and anything, honestly. Now, if we are inside a function and we declare a variable, then that variable scope is no longer the global scope. That variable scope is the function scope. So if we were outside of that function and we tried to call a variable that we created in it, we would not be able to access it. And I'll try to put some examples on screen so you guys can get an idea of what I mean. JavaScript is unable to see from the outside which variables have been created inside a function. The interesting thing is though that a function always has access to the variables that have been created outside from it. Tricky, I know, but it's really simple if you think about it. When we're outside of a function in the global scope, we cannot see the variables inside a function. But if we're inside a function, we have access to all the variables outside of that function. And now that we understand scopes, or at least I hope, hopefully we can use that knowledge to better understand closures. Now before I get into what closures are, let me start by first explaining why they exist. Closures exist because we want to be able to see the variables and or use them that have been created inside a function while being outside of it. Okay, okay, Matthew, I get why closures exist, but what are they? Now that we discussed why closures exist, now we have to understand and demonstrate how they work. Like we saw earlier in one of the previous examples I, I showed you on screen, the variable A was not accessible to us when we tried constant logging it outside the function. But what if we did this? And that right there, my friends, that is a closure. A closure is nothing more than an inner function that has access to the variables of the other function, the function that's enclosing that inner function. And I know what you're probably thinking right now. You're thinking, well, Matthew, why didn't you just tell us this to begin with? Well, yes, the definition of closure is very simple. Understanding what a scope is and what closures try to accomplish, I find that more important. Also, a closure has three scope chains. Forget about the chains, it's just a fancy way of saying that basically a closure, it has access to its own scope, meaning the variables that we declared inside the function. It also has access to the outer function's variables. And last but not least, it always has access to the global scope. Oh, and one last thing. No matter how many layers deep we go, a closure will always, and I mean always, have access to the variables 
that have been declared outside of it. For now, honestly, all you guys have to remember is that a closure is a function within a function that gives us the ability to see the other functions variables. Anyway guys, thanks for watching the video, I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you guys spotted any mistakes, don't hesitate to mention them below.